Let's look at a perfectly elastic collision, perfectly elastic. And that means kinetic energy is conserved. And the way that you actually accomplish this mechanically is you can put a spring on one of these cars. And while the objects are interacting and pushing on each other, there's going to be energy stored in that spring. Then the spring will expand and return that energy to the system. So I end up with the same amount of kinetic energy in this final state as what I had in the initial state. Now what complicates these problems mathematically is that I now have two final velocities that have to be determined. So let's get started on it. Um, I would start by saying P initial equals P final. There's no net external force, so the momentum is conserved. So the forces these objects experience are interaction forces between the two internal pieces of the system. My initial is two kilograms, three meters per second. My final is two kilograms moving at an unknown final velocity V1 final plus an additional one and a half kilograms moving at an unknown final velocity V2 final. We're going to have to do a lot of algebra, so I'm going to clean this up and just disappear the units. All right, so 6 is equal to 2V1F plus 1.5V2F. It might be nice to multiply that by 2 just to get rid of the decimal. So I have 12 equals 4V1F plus 3 V2F. All right, our second condition is that the kinetic energy in the initial state must be equal to the kinetic energy in the final state. So that means 1 half times that 2 kilograms times 3 meters per second, all squared, has to be equal to 1 half times the 2 kilograms times its final velocity squared plus the other source of kinetic energy in the final state, one half, one and a half kilograms times V2 final squared. And again, we want to clean this up because we have a lot of algebra coming. So I'm going to multiply both sides by two to kill all those one halves. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by two again so I don't have to deal with this decimal over here of one and a half. So I have 3 squared, which is 9 times 2, that's 18. Multiply it by 2, and I get 36. On the right-hand side, again, I multiplied by 2 even after I canceled those 1 halves. So I get 4 V1 final squared, and then a 3 V2 final squared. So now I've got two equations and two unknowns and unfortunately the system of equations is nonlinear so I can't use elimination but I can still use substitution to deal with it and it's always going to be easier in a problem like this where I have a stationary target and a block approaching it if I go ahead and solve for v2 final uh, first in other words out of the top equation, I'm going to solve for V1F. And then substitute for that in the bottom of the equation. And that's going to give me an equation with only V2 final in it. It makes your life easier for a really good reason that I'll explain when we get there. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to solve for V1F in my linear equation. And that would be 12 minus 3V2F all divided by 4. And then I'm going to pop that into the bottom equation. So I have 36 equals 4 times V1F squared. So I've got to square this thing. Plus 3V2F squared. That leaves only one unknown in there, and it's V2 final. And I've got to clean things up a little bit. So let's talk through this a bit. 
when I square the thing in the brackets, I'm going to end up with two factors of four in the denominator. Why don't we plan to cancel one of those? And then I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by four to get rid of the remaining four. So that gets me a 144 on the left-hand side and a 12 minus 3v2 final all squared plus a 12v2 final squared. And when I square this binomial in the parentheses, I'm going to do FOIL for that. And the product of the 12 times 12 is 144. And then my cross terms are going to be a negative 36v2 final minus another 36v2 final. And then I have a quadratic term of plus 9v2 final squared. And then I have this spectator on the right-hand side 12v2 final squared. Okay, and my constants are going to cancel out. And there's a good physical reason for this that we'll get in just a moment, but that's why it's easier to solve for v2 final first. So I end up with a negative 72v2 final plus 21v2 final squared equals zero. We'll just move over here. And a V2 factors out of this. So I don't have to do a, a non-trivial factorization like I would have to do if I had solved for V1 first. And I get a negative 72 plus 21 V2F. And so I get two solutions for V2 final. One of them is the V2 final is equal to zero. The other one is if this other factor is equal to 0. And if I add 72 to both sides and divide by 21, v2 final equals 72 over 21 is my second solution. And a decimal approximation for that is 3.43. If I keep three sig figs, 3.43 meters per second. Now, I know for physical reasons that that's got to be the answer we're looking for. Because this block got hit from the left, of course, it's going to be moving to the right at the end of the process. But why did the mathematics return to us this extraneous solution of zero? It's because all the mathematics knows is that we want momentum to be conserved and we want kinetic energy to be conserved. And one way to do that is for the collision to never occur in the first place. So this V2 final equals zero is like before the collision even happens. That would give me the same amount of momentum I started with and the same amount of kinetic energy I started with, but it's not what we're interested in. So I knew that zero was going to happen and therefore that the factorization was going to be easier. And that's why I tried to solve for V2 final first. Let's get V1 final. I would go back to my original substitution for V1 and plug in V2 final. And out of that piece, I'm going to get 0 0.428 if I keep three sig figs. And there's our first very typical example of a perfectly elastic collision. I want to point out one thing here. There are some collisions where the originally moving car could be reflected back in the other direction. The way that comes out of the mathematics is that V1 final would end up with a minus sign on it. So as long as you set everything up as if it's moving to the right in, in your picture, a minus sign would mean that the result was something moving to the left. 